Seamlessly export the true 3D state of anisotropy from slide 3 into slide 2 with the new generalized anisotropic integration. This will allow you to directly compare your 2D and 3D results, reinforcing your analysis. This tutorial will go over the process of exporting 3D anisotropic surfaces from slide 3 to slide 2 and what you need to know in the process. In slide 3, select File, Recent, and then Tutorials folder from the menu and open the file named Anisotropy Slide 3 to Slide 2. The model will look as shown here. Now select Materials and then Define Materials. Note that the materials GA1 and GA2 are generalized anisotropic material types that follow anisotropic surfaces. In material GA1, go to More by clicking on the pencil icon and view the strength function. The material follows an anisotropic surface as shown. Note that the mapping function is set to linear, which is equivalent to setting A equals 0 and B equals 90. It simply means that the strength is linearly interpolated between material weak 1 and material strong 1. This means that when the column base is parallel to the nearest part of the anisotropic surface, the strength of material weak 1 is used. When it is perpendicular to the nearest part of the surface, the strength of material strong 1 is used. For any angles in between, the strengths of the two are interpolated accordingly. Next, click Cancel. Now, play around with the model to locate the generalized anisotropic materials and their corresponding anisotropic surfaces. In the next step, click on the compute icon in the toolbar. Now, Select the Results tab. The factor of safety should be just below 1, as shown in the figure on your screen. Select View and then Slide 2 Section Crater for getting a Slide 2 section ready to be exported. Click on the Create Single Section option and define the section in the direction of the failure by using the X, Y, and Strike inputs. Enter x as negative 277 meters, y as 146 meters, and strike as 179 degrees. These are the coordinates that we made note of before. Now, click OK and go to Analysis, Slide to Integration, and select Compute Export to Slide 2. Ensure Section 1 is selected and click Open. Your Slide 2 model should look as shown here. Note that the anisotropic surfaces are labeled as Imported from Slide 3. We will now review the material parameters. To do so, select Properties and then Define Materials. Select the GA1 material. Notice that the strength type is generalized anisotropic, and the input type is imported from slide 3. This input type will only be available for models that were exported from slide 3. Click on the Edit icon next to New Function. The Function dialog looks the same as it did in slide 3, with the following differences. Firstly, there's a 3D Details column. Secondly, there's a 3D Anisotropy Handling option. Now, hit View in the 3D Details column. You can see the strike direction of the 2D section that you defined in Slide 3, and the 3D Dip and Dip direction of the anisotropic plane at each segment along the anisotropic surface. Next, click OK. 
Now let's explore the 3D anisotropy handling option. There are two options in the dropdown. The first one is consider apparent dip, and the second one is consider 3D anisotropy. To use the apparent dip option for a pure 2D analysis, set the 3D anisotropy handling option to consider apparent dip and click OK. Next, select the GA2 material in the dialog and click the edit icon to set the 3D anisotropy handling option to consider apparent dip. Click OK and hit OK again in the material properties dialog. Now, select analysis and then compute. Next, select Analysis and then Interpret to launch the Slide 2 interpreter. Note that the factor of safety is very similar to the one in Slide 3. Likewise, the slip surface in green is very similar to the Slide 3 surface in red. By selecting Consider Apparent Dip, you're making this analysis assume that the anisotropic surfaces are purely 2D and are simply the ones we see on the screen. They're equivalent to the regular 2D anisotropic surface. Now let's try the Consider 3D Anisotropy method, which considers the 3D orientations. Go to the Analysis menu and select Modeler to return to the Slide 2 Modeler. Select Properties and then Define Materials. This time, set 3D Anisotropic Handling to consider 3D anisotropy for both GA1 and GA2 materials. Click OK in both dialogs. Select Analysis and then Compute to begin computing the model. Finally, select Analysis and then Interpret. The results will appear as displayed on your screen. With the Consider 3D Anisotropy option, this analysis is using the dip and dip direction at each segment along the anisotropic surfaces so that you can consider this as a 2D section with two 3D anisotropic surfaces. Now, you must be wondering which method to use. Unfortunately, there's no black and white answer. You're trying to represent a 3D object on a 2D plane in the best way possible. All you need is an assumption that works best for your model and the type of analysis that you want to conduct. Accurately account for 3D anisotropy in your 2D model and be confident in comparing your 2D and 3D results. Visit the link in the description below to get started with a free trial of Slide 2 and Slide 3. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to subscribe to our channel for more tutorials.